All right, everybody, so welcome back to another video. So today's video, we're gonna be updating the firmware on our new Android 12 Join head unit. Since this unit's come out, they've released four or five updates already, constantly improving the experience. And this one is actually really neat, the January firmware update, because there's a whole new UI that has been introduced. So if you don't really care for this look, of this UI, they have a new one that you can choose from now. So big changes, more CAN bus support for different vehicles, new user interface, a couple of things. So when it comes to updating firmware on the joining unit, so people are having problems, so I'm gonna walk you through exactly what you need to do. So the first thing you wanna do is head over to the joining firmware update website. And there'll be a link in the description of the video below. You want to search um, for your specific model. Basically, there's a uh, high resolution version of the firmware and a lower resolution version of the firmware, depending on the unit you have. In my case, we have this 11.6 uh, 1080p unit. So I'm going to select the appropriate file, and then we're going to download that file. We'll go through a series of screens, click download anyway, and it will save about a three gigabyte file to your computer. You wanna unzip or extract that file. It will uh, save it as a folder and then copy everything that's in that folder to the root of a USB drive. So in my case, I'm using this uh, SanDisk Cruiser Glide 16 gigabyte. There are a few things you have to consider when it comes to the thumb drive that you use. When I first tried to update the firmware on this, I used a 64 gigabyte that was formatted as EX FAT, and I couldn't get it to work. It would start to do the firmware update, but then it would not complete. And um, the specific instructions are you have to have a smaller than 32 gigabyte thumb drive, so eight or 16 gigabytes is plenty, and you want to format it as FAT32. That is very important. So under 32 gigabytes, format it as FAT32, and then, we're, like I said, we're gonna copy those files to the root of the thumb drive. All right, so got my thumb drive with my firmware files on it. I'm going to plug it in to the USB port. You wanna plug it into the one on the back of the unit um, that says OTG, basically the main USB port. So plug that in. All right, it's recognizing the drive. And then we should get a prompt here. See, it says update package has been detected immediately restart the upgrade you can just click start or let it do the countdown then the unit will reboot and start the upgrade process you just want to give it some time let it run through the process when it's done it will say upgrading done reboot and that's when we're going to remove the thumb drive I'll show you There was a quick blip that said OS update done, and then it went into installing app update. So it's not actually done yet. All right, now it's gonna get to this point where it says all done, exclamation point. It's not all done. Just let it sit. So it's installing um, newer versions of the applications. So it was a little confusing with it saying all done. It's actually done. Now it says, please remove update device and the unit will reboot. So now we pull the thumb drive out. And then we're going to reboot into the new operating system. All right, so once we're into the unit, we need to do a few things. The time is wrong. So we want, we want to set the time and we want to get ourselves back on Wi-Fi. So it basically it wiped everything out. Um, your music files, video files and stuff are still here, but the system level, all the applications have been reset. So again, we're gonna go into settings, display, system applications, date and time, auto sync is on, time zone selection, Okay. I don't 
it's already reset from the GPS. Pretty good. Link, Wi Fi. Get on your Wi Fi network. Uh, see that it took a few minutes but for our applications to show up. They were installing in the background. So just FYI, if you get in here right away and the applications aren't there, it's because they're installing. Going into Z Link. Permissions. Okay, so one thing right there, um, I just connected uh, to Apple CarPlay via USB. Um, some people said that in previous firmware versions that the functionality is broken to connect to Z-Link via just the USB cable. Um, so if that was the case for you, this update will fix that issue as you can see all right so now on to the good stuff so let's go into our settings and let's go down here to system you can see it shows our latest update uh, if we click factory settings 8888 okay so supposedly there are more um, CAN bus options so I'm just gonna look my setup Raise Ford doesn't really look like I have any more options than I did before. All right, so nothing really added under anything that I can use, but especially if you have a, a can box made by Simple, which is the one that Join includes the most stuff, there's a lot more options here. And it'll even tell you if you click on it what version of the CAN box is supposed to be used. It's the FDSS 12. So it's like most of the newest Fords use this FDSS 14. All right, so one other thing, real quick, before we get to the new UI, um, as far as the CAN bus settings, because this is important to some people. So if you go to original car settings here, So now it has unit settings. So we can change the temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit, the speed unit to miles per hour, measuring unit to miles Fahrenheit. So why this is important is because if I go back up here, external temperature display, can turn on if that air conditioner switch where it will show you you know when you do something with the climate control I, I leave that off and if you turn on the air conditioner float button that will make it so you can tap this and then you can change settings I don't really think it's necessary because the settings are all right here this is just transit specific stuff here so if I gotta get back in there so now you can see our temperature has appeared and it is correct now in Fahrenheit, so that's nice. So before it would only display in Celsius. So I do have the temperature right over here on the dashboard, but it's also displaying here as well, and it is correct now. So it's just to show you um, they're addressing um, some of the issues with the firmware, especially for those of us here in the United States. To edit this. So now, before, if you had it on the speedometer, it only showed kilometers per hour. Now, it will show miles per hour. So that's why that's important. Um, it just allows, you know, some different settings in here. If I go into the applications, go to car info. Um, this is where you can set up um, specific uh, functions with the CAN bus system also, or make changes, I should say. A lot of this stuff does not apply to the vehicle that I'm in. But you can see there's a lot of settings in here. It's where again you can also change from 
kilometers to miles per hour and it will it is changing my speedometer when I tap that and then if I go in here to basic information I can click tire information one shortcoming still it only displays um, the TPMS in KPA instead of PSI so if this would display in PSI that'd be great because especially in my transit here uh, you cannot look at it on the dash while the vehicle is moving all right so now the, the really cool new feature we're gonna go in here to settings display now right here under theme we have something new we can click UI 2 okay and you can see that now change some color and this is the new launcher screen here so you can swipe up and it will show you all the applications um, you can change the ones that are down here so these applications in here like the stereo they can be drug out of there you can put whatever you want in here you can delete them just by going up here to remove I take that back so anything you don't want on the screen up here to remove so right now I just have one screen folders that's another thing just by putting it like that now it'll pop up into a folder and then you can drag stuff out that's pretty neat obviously I do want these cameras I have a very clean screen as you can see now you can like I said swipe up um, if you want to change the wallpaper that is an application I do give you a few more options now and then again if I turn on the headlights it does change the screen and then it gives your dark wallpaper options Just go with the simple black one these are pretty much the same things that were there before just a few more So there is a way to import wallpapers. Not exactly sure how to do that. Okay, so there's quite a few more kind of neat looking options for wallpaper. Something even neater if we go to our file manager here. Uh, right here in the owner APK, there's this thing called Ocean HD. We're gonna install that app. This is a live wallpaper. It was on the Android 10 join units normally there's a continue button we're gonna set it as our home screen you can see so now we do have the live wallpaper it does work one thing I'll say about it is like so when you run an application like the radio you can see that it's a little bit harder to um, see everything with that as the background that would be my only critique of it it actually gets easier to see when you turn on the night mode because everything turns white against the dark background so a little more fine tuning probably necessary uh, with this but you do not have to run the live wallpaper obviously it's just something just an option that you can do back here Let's just change it back to something else All right. so now again click the radio again it's a little bit easier to see click night mode there you go so this is actually a favorite applications icon or area I guess so things that you use the most would just appear here 
So to add any widget to the desktop display, we're gonna just press and hold, and it gives you all your options. So you can see from the launcher, so if I wanna add like a radio widget, I can do that right there. So now I don't necessarily even need the radio right there. I can just click on this. It takes me in there. Or just click play, just like before. So I can go back and add music widget. All right, so I'm in the Play Store, so I don't really like the date and time widget. So I can go in here, find one I like. All right, so I got a couple different ones to try here. So if I want to get rid of this one, try the other one. Nice and simple. It's a little bit better. So you can get any kind of widget you want. You can download it from the Play Store. Another live wallpaper I like is this Forest Live Wallpaper. It changes with the time of day, which makes it kind of neat. All right, so we click Use This Wallpaper, and it gives us the option to set wallpaper. Obviously, I turn on the headlights. It's not dark yet, though. But at night, the wallpaper will get dark to match the scenery. It's just one more thing you can do. All right, so I think I have that set about how I like it. All right, so one other thing I just want to show you real quick. A little tip or trick, I guess you want to say. So if... Um, you're using the AR camera like I am, which is the front camera. So if I click on that, you can see here's my front view, rear. So what you can do is obviously you can, you know, play back from within the app here, um, different files that have been recorded. But the question is, how do you export these files? So there's a couple different ways to do it, uh, but you don't do it from within here. So if we go to the home menu, if we go to our file manager, and in the file manager, we click SD card. Basically, you'll get to this menu here. You wanna click DVR. And then all these TS files are the video files here. Now basically, uh, they have date and time stamps on them when they started recording. So you can see, obviously, video driving now the key is if you want to do something with that video you'll click on it and now you can um, you know copy it to a thumb drive or you know whatever else you'd like to do with it you could email it if you you know had internet on here and you had uh, the, the web open you could attach it as a file and just send it like that directly from here so there's a lot more options with the uh, regular old-fashioned DVRs that were plugged in via USB cable you actually had to physically pull the SD card out which you still can do it's just it's behind the screen so it's kind of a pain and you know put it into a computer or now you don't have to do that um, there's ways to extract that data since it is stored on an SD card behind the screen so if you don't have the AR cameras and you'd like to get them I'll have a link to them um, but it is a little more useful in my opinion uh, now that it is just a video connection to the unit and the unit is actually recording it not a separate device okay so that is it that's how you update to the latest firmware give you a look around a little bit I do like it I do like the new UI I'm going to be using this and still I'm very impressed with the speed at which joining is addressing problems and coming out with new updates so if any questions or comments be sure to leave them below like the video if it helped you out be sure to subscribe for more and until next time we'll see you later